If you like this type of information, press the like button during the video. It's the only payment I take for doing these videos. Every year on my birthday, I give myself a present. It is not the type of present I normally like to get, but in the slow journey of having IBM, it helps me maintain a long-term historical look at my inclusion body myositis and documents my past with this disease for future reference. Doctors Amato and Barone revised a functional rating scale or FRS survey used in the past for ALS patients for use on folks with IBM. This survey allows you to measure swallowing, handwriting, cutting food, handling utensils, dressing, hygiene, turning in bed, adjusting bed covers, sit to stand, walking, and climbing stairs. The IBM FRS correlates well with isometric strength and manual muscle testing and was also intended to be utilized as an endpoint measurement in future IBM clinical trials. Later in this video, I will explain how it can be further utilized. This survey is a snapshot of a point in my years with IBM, and doing this survey on or around my birthday is a convenient time to do it every year. I guess you could choose another date, such as January 1st, the anniversary of your IBM diagnosis, or any other date you might want to remember. Putting a reminder on your calendar is also a good idea. Because I sometimes may look at my condition as better or worse than it really might be, I also ask my wife to take the same survey about my present condition. Both scores can be charted on a spreadsheet to show your history. For those not familiar with the functional rating scale survey, let's quickly run through it. It is a short 10 question survey and all you have to do is read the subject being addressed and circle or check the number between 0 and 4 that matches your ability and add them up after taking the survey. This will be your functional validation scale survey score. Make sure to enter the date you took the survey on the top of the page as well as who completed the survey, yourself or caregiver's name. Have your survey score entered on a spreadsheet. If you had a spouse or caregiver also take the survey, enter their score on the spreadsheet at this time also. Have your spreadsheet program make a charted graph to show progression over time. Don't forget to save your spreadsheet. If you are not computer literate, have a friend, grandchild, or neighbor make a spreadsheet for you and assist them in updating it every year. Print off some copies and give one to each of your doctors during your next visits. There is an additional step that I would like to see implemented for the IBM community, a severity rating, stage one, stage two, and stage three, depending on your score. Why do I think this is important? Doctors, hospitals, home care providers, physical therapists, and even the federal government's Medicare system, as well as durable medical equipment manufacturers and providers, have no measurable way to differentiate between newly diagnosed persons at the beginning of their IBM journey and those who are nearly bedridden with this disease. Physical therapists designing range of motion or isometric strength of muscle exercise programs must realize the differences between stage one, stage two, and stage three IBM patients to properly assist us. Too often generic exercise programs aimed at IBM patients include all kinds of activities for newly diagnosed persons that could not be expected from a patient in advanced stages of IBM. This could be due to the fact that newly diagnosed IBM patients often seek help, as they should, from physical therapists in an attempt to uh, maintain the muscles not affected by IBM. Physical therapists 
do not see IBM patients that are in the later stages of IBM because those patients in the advanced stages have often given up on receiving help of any type, but that's not to say there are no simple exercises that an advanced IBMer could still accomplish. How many times do we see a video about exercises only to see a therapist sitting on the floor showing how to do stretching routines? Something a stage three IBMer would not be able to do. Wouldn't it be advantageous for all if exercise videos for IBM would be labeled for the different stages or levels of IBM? Take me as an example. My FRS test score is currently 11 or in stage 3. I'm browsing the internet and find this wonderful video written for IBM patients that includes exercises that claim it will be good for my unaffected muscles. I watch the entire video and realize I can't do any of the suggested routines suggested in the video program. Scratch that one. I find another article written by a prominent physical therapist with specific exercises for people with IBM. I show it to my wife and we predict it will only give her some exercise picking me up off the floor. Insurance companies, including our own government's Medicare insurance, don't have a clue between the differences of a newly diagnosed IBMer and one in the advanced stages. Could we get Medicare insurance coverage for an elevating seat on a power chair if a doctor could properly code us as severe or stage 3 IBM patient? Perhaps, just maybe perhaps, an IBM functional rating scale severity code could establish matching needs depending on an FRS score. Too often, I feel that the Muscular Dystrophy Association the Myositis Association and others forget about the different severities of IBM and offer little or anything as far as information or guidance for those in stage two or stage three of this dreadful disease. The functional rating scale revised for IBM by doctors Amato and Barone could also be a great source of information regarding future planning for newly diagnosed IBM people. Line items on the FRS sheet can help people plan for their futures. A person just diagnosed with IBM may still be able to stand up from a seated position without using his arms, thus realizing a score of four, but realizes a better understanding of his disease degradation as he or she slowly goes from a score of 4 to a 3, 3 to a 2, or 2 to a 1. By the time he or she circles an FRS score of a 2 regarding the sit to stand question number 8, he should be planning on getting a lift chair and possibly a high-low bed. Inclusion body myositis is a variable and complex disease. The functional rating system is only one tool used to mark progression of the disease, but could be used to identify the needs of the different levels of this disease. Identifying IBM patients by a severity code could also be an informative way to further educate the medical community about this disease. An internet link to the functional rating scale is shown on the screen and is also shown in the notes found on the YouTube page for this video. Thanks for tuning in to my IB Myositis channel. I hope this information is helpful in your battle with IBM now and in your future.